episode of the Backchat Basketball Show. Uh, hello at backchatpodcast.com.au is where you can email us, send us questions, give us feedback, tell us whatever you want, and backchat underscore basketball is where you can find us on socials like Instagram. Uh, 2006 was the last time that the Sacramento Kings made a playoff appearance, and it was also the last time that Greg Hire was on this podcast. That's how long <laughs> it's been since he's been available, but he's well, but he's here now, so we should uh, welcome him. Hello, Greg. Clap, 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 clap. How you been? Ah, oh, you're welcome. It's what the, the, the listeners have been waiting for. I know. Uh, look, no, no. let's just say, um, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a unique eight weeks for me, mate. I've, um, no longer was I able to uh, pretend like I was going for meetings um, yep. at my previous employment. Um, right. So, if, if, if any of my former employees are listening, um, <laughs> obviously, I was taking uh, proper time off. But no, yeah, of I'm now full-time in my charity. and um, Brilliant. Life just has got busy, all right. So I apologise. Um, it's it's just not it's not I, yeah it's no excuse. No, that's I'm fine. You're the only busy guy. I get it. It's fine. You're the only person <laughs> in Australia either. that's busy. Right. Um, let's get it straight into some basketball stuff. Uh, it is NBL free agency. Can I, can I cut cut you off though? Yeah, yeah. Okay, let's go. Um, I'm going to tell this a funny story about the word busy, and I imagine mm-hmm. uh, I, I was I was doing a keynote speech. That's what I do. I'm big time like that. But um, yep. I asked the MC um, how he was doing. And generally, the the response is busy, right? Like everyone, yeah, yeah. yeah so keeping myself busy. busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I try not to do that because, especially in the mental health space, people when they say busy, it's like, well, you're not you're not uh, preaching. Like, you, sorry, you're not doing what you you preach in terms yeah, of right. like keeping yeah, yourself. Yeah. So I'm like, no, no, I'm doing well. Obviously busy. Anyway, this guy said to me when I said busy, he said never busy, being productive. And I, ah, <laughs> all right, I wanted love to that. punch him straight. Oh, look, yeah. I don't condone. No, I don't love it. But now every time I laugh because I'm just like, really? Like, did I just re- meet Tony Robbins Jr.? Yeah. Like, yeah. Well, I had to like share that, that with you. But go, hey, kick the show. Yeah. No, no. It's like that guy recently has been going viral where he's just like, my day, my first day starts at six and it ends at 12. That's day one. <laughs> at day two starts at 12 and it goes till six. By the time you've had one day, I've had four. Spread that over the, over the course of a year. I've had five more years of my life than you. I will always beat you. Like, yeah. See, I always love that because even when I was growing up and as those like the grind and the motivational clips yep. and it's that guy, that, that pastor and he's talking like, if you value sleep more than you value hard work, you're not going to make it. And I was like, I love sleep. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I will beat you in the long run if you're only working on two hours sleep. Yep. Like, I'm sorry. That fundamentally is very important. Mm. So, like, let's not ignore the fact that that is it. But, yeah, I ah, love that. All right, yeah, kick us good. off, Dan. All right. Um, it big is show, M- big yeah, show. Yeah, big show. Lots to talk about. The NBL free agency period has started. So, uh, that was today, Thursday, or was it yesterday, yep. Wednesday, whatever it is. Um, when we record this, this is going to come out the following morning. So, hopefully nothing happens at the strike of midnight with uh, any free agents and it's you know, out of um, – that we're sort of out of touch with, but um, do you remember this time of year for you? When was the last time you were you were a free agent? Um, I know mm. you you know you played your entire career in Perth, and you've said before that you know you never really looked much elsewhere outside of Perth. But you know, what's this like for as a player at the moment? Oh, it's brutal. No, I I, I remember it vividly, and I've been speaking to the the current group that are negotiating or potentially going to get bought out and um, or looking for new deals. It's um. It's brutal. I remember, you know, uh, being a development player. Um, we well, I got six thousand dollars to my very first contract, where there was no no roster spots available, and I was waiting for for a spot to open up. Stevie Way uh, leaves, and that happens, and I was on minimum, so I wasn't really there was no negotiation. I didn't have an agent to then my very first contract, where I actually had a little bit of leverage. You know, like ended up being a starter that year. But what I'm saying that that was like sort of exciting. Like I never had like other clubs call me up. Um, you know, I remember at that at that time Rob Beveridge was the Illawarra coach and um, asked me to grab a coffee and was like, "Look, this is what budget I've got. Um, if you're interested in coming, this is the role that I've got for you." And um, yeah, so you sort of are getting enticed. It's like back when you're in college and getting recruited. Um, I remember that. Visiting. So that is, yeah, but that, that is certainly exciting. Um, but that changed. Like I remembered it was funny then, you know, when I was on long-term deals to then negotiating became brutal um, or you're, you know, I remembered one bad year and it's sort of ironic 
Um, I, I did a presentation this week at a school and these kids were like, oh, we've got a newspaper article of you. And it was an article of when I was re-signed and it was after the season we lost to Cairns um, in the playoffs that year with a lot of injuries. And the article was super negative. It was like... Right. Greg High has been given a second chance. Um, there was like quotes from um, Trev like saying, I, I still believe in him. Like, yeah, maybe he wasn't as productive as he would have liked, but he's yep. got a role. Um, and it's just funny like how that sort of shifts, um, the whole media narrative of, of what that looks like. So it's certainly a stressful time for one, look at the guys that are potentially um, have long-term deals that are openly has been discussed that they're going to be bought out like i think that's evident now yeah um and so they're finding deals um to then you know uh, talking like a guy like jesse or someone like that that's that that year to the year structure yeah um to then the guy like lt who in the windows that is the the world's at his feet like he can literally pick and choose and go i can go wherever i want <laughs> i yep. can uh pick and choose what i do so mm. uh, certainly a stressful time I, I i definitely you know um it was funny like later in my career where it was like one year deals and I never ever felt like I never got a deal but what really um, impacted me was like um, I remember one year and I'm like, I hold it um, really close uh, a journalist and I hope he, he listens to this you can let him know Corbin Middlemess uh, over in um, another uh, platform uh, basically, as all journos do, they they want to get the exclusive, you yep. know. And so I remember being at the Wildcats Ball, about eighty four beers deep, um, were twelve you, bottles were you of Cab Sav. Were you DJing yeah, at this point? I was I was DJing and the horses <laughs> was played like eight <laughs> times. But I remember as I was walking off, um, someone like said, I think he said to me like, "Oh, hey, um, sorry to hear the news." And I was like, "What are you talking about?" And he's like, "Oh, like it, the word is that you're not getting offered a contract." And I was like. Okay, like I'm going to have to deal right. with this with a horrible hangover. Um, <laughs> he was hoping that I was like, yeah, man, it's true. Like I'm, I'm moving right, on, you fishing. know, but yeah. And um, and then it's sort of I like called the club. I had a really good relationship with Nick Marvin and um, yeah. and obviously then Troy later in my year, career. CEOs, sort of former said, like, CEOs of the yeah, Wildcats. Yeah, and I was like, tell me the truth. What's going on? And they're like, nah. Um, but here's a really funny story of how that works and how tough the business can be. Uh, I had signed a contract um, while I was negotiating. I actually got rid of my agent um, midway through my career because I was like, man, taking 7%, um, I can literally just negotiate my own pool, like way. I know what I want. It's like um, a dollar an hour. Deals. Yeah, correct. And um, so I was like, nah, I'm not, I'm not doing this. And um, so anyway, I remember meeting with Nick Marvin um, at the old Swan Brewery or whatever it is. like. Yep. Um, uh, Riverside Drive. My wife dropped me off. Um, anyway, I, I left the meeting and everything that I asked for, Nick was like, yep, sweet, no worries. And I was like, okay, it's like this is too like, bizarre. So I like get in the car and my wife goes, oh, how'd it go? And I was like, you, know, you agreed for everything? And she's like, that's pretty easy. Like, are you surprised? And I'm like, nah, I'm surprised, but I'm cautious. Like there's something going on here. Right. You know, I don't, it's, it's just too good to be true obviously like <laughs> get an email two hours here's your contract sign it let us know and it was like for a one-year deal and i was like mate are you kidding like i like i literally he knew i was wanting a three-year and i was like mate, i want a three-year like and he's yeah. like no nah, i can't give that you know like this is like bet on yourself you know if you get good right um to make some more money you, know, you can yeah make you more and i was like yeah no i'll just get you, you continuously um increase my my contract every year like give me a player option so I'll opt out and get more money if you want. Like, yeah, fair yeah. enough. Like, um, And so it was like this real, you had to be smart um, to the point where then uh, one year, I think it might have been the next or whatever contract, my wife was pregnant and we held off the announcement um, because I knew that Nick would say um, he would take money off um, right and so i remember like you're like, going to be unavailable can't you know rely on you to be there all the time oh he knew yeah. like if you well not not no not that i'm a perf guy and i think what had right. happened was ainsley was pregnant my wife we had just bought a house but we didn't tell anyone because yep. like i obviously was like and you're not buying a house and then leaving you know what i mean so yeah, i was yeah, just yeah. like your okay. leverage so, so you, your leverage anyone. is gone right and so i just like left it and then as soon as like I signed, I was like, 
Instagram, like, we're pregnant. <laughs> like, I'm moving into this home. And I remember uh, seeing Nick and he goes, well played, like, well yeah, played. Yeah. And many years later, having this chat about him, he goes, yeah, I said, you would have given me less. He's like, absolutely would have. Like, yeah. you know, I know, I knew you wouldn't leave. Like, oh, the yeah. cards would now no longer be in your court. So, of course. it's a tough thing, but yeah. it's interesting. Well, speaking of the Wildcats, let's talk about some current stuff that, that's going on because um, potentially next year on the roster you could have bryce cotton and jesse wagstaff and that's it um they're well, not even jesse well that's sorry he's not contracted yeah that's it's, true right now it's Corey webster and bryce cotton that's right so yeah and i don't i don't know if Corey is like is that official has that been made i know that they're oh, saying it's very knows. close but um there isn't many players there's almost uh, a max exodus of, to- of sorts so obviously you know they're they're the two other imports I would imagine aren't coming back. Uh, coming back, Brady Maddock um, has said all he wants to do is make money. And so, um, you know, good on him. He's gonna, oh, he said this. Yeah, he told me when I interviewed him on, on Back Chat, he said, look, yeah. um, my main goal is to make money. Like, sure, no, playing basketball. Yeah. And, and as, as it would be for a lot of people. Yeah, and he's sure. a college kid. You know, he's coming out of college. Yep. He wants to make a, make a career for himself. So he said, look, winning is yep. great. Teammates are fun, all that stuff but I'm here to make money. That's my one goal. Um, and it's funny because I, I hit up the Wildcats after that, um, you know, uh, just giving, it, giving them a heads up because they put me, they, they did let, <laughs> let me do the interview and I just said, hey, hey just let you know, like this is going to be in the interview. You know, I'm going to leave it in there. And they're like, oh yeah, we've already dealt with that. Like he said it in a few interviews already. So he was very open about this idea of making money. So yep. um, there could be a completely different roster on the on the court. I mean, it looks like there will be because um, obviously Mitch Norton is rumored to be, you know, testing the waters. Um, uh, Todd Blanchfield, mm. there's no guarantees he's going to return. So you got Bryce on a longer deal, which I, I know the Wildcats would do any, everything it takes to keep him around. And look, I think he's a he's Perth for life. He set, seems to have settled mm-hmm. down properly here. Um, but yeah, it's going to be very odd for the Wildcats this off season, and it was very tricky, especially um, for for Danny and um, the front office there, Hutchie. And I don't know, how do you see this playing out for them? I think this is going to be the the fork in the road of where this organization really goes. Like in, in for the next five to ten years, to be completely honest, um, not even on players as coach. Um, uh, reshuffling, you know, like yep. Mike Kelly going to Southeast Melbourne, he's gone. That's your, your first assistant, Luke Brennan, who was your second assistant. Uh, and he's been was, with the club for a long time, Luke. Yep, has been removed. And so Keegan Crawford's been promoted. And then they brought in um, Gerard Martin, 27 uh, year old uh, coach that was at Cal Baptist, I think, where John really has um, experience with. Um, he was actually a, a develop. He, he tried out as a development player right. and it's funny i was speaking to jesse about it i said do you remember him doing a tryout and he's like yeah mate like his knees were shot and they right um offered him like a management uh, manager position like the team manager glorified team manager role and said right. oh look if your knees become good and um so kind of crazy to see but he was he was a really great human um like again i don't know his coaching ability but it's certainly going to be a, a, an interesting yeah. time i mean like yeah. I, I would think Corey is done um Part of me thinks, you know, and, and what will happen is the domino effect, right? Like, uh, yeah, as as you sort of ima- uh, sort of said, the Sean Thomas and, and Brady Manic, I wouldn't expect them to come back. Um, like, I wouldn't get the, those guys back, like, as much as Brady went. Like, I look back, if you reflect on this season, I still think it's failure. Like, yep. um, you're saying, if you count that we made the playoffs, like you got bundled out and then get into the actual finals per se, um, didn't get an opportunity to play on your home court um, and make extra money for the season. So for yeah. me, that, that, that that's not finals. Um, so zero from two in the past years. So, you know, I think the pressure is going to be on Danny and in and, and doing so, like the whole roster is going to change. Yeah. Um, have you ever had and that happen what, when you were guys. playing? Did you have like, no, in your I era, you it, had like a lot of consist- consistency. You wouldn't have had yeah, like, and, you know, eight new players come through. No, 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 never. And I think that's the reason I think you look at the success of all teams has always been that. Like, yeah. what I don't even think, I'd be surprised to see success. It might help success 
down the line, like three or four years down the line, dependent on who you who you get and some of the names you get. But I look at it and it's a it's a very high risk like yeah. situation, um, high reward, but your job's on the line, which I guess is it is like they have to do because if they don't make the playoffs, I think the writing's on the wall. Like there's no chance. Um, and even that, like yeah, because. To me, I they they regressed from the previous year. Yeah, really, from a results standpoint. Um, and I look at what happened. Like, so you know, you look at the movements that they made. Um, Ty Webster during the year uh, brought in, um, which at that time, and I had mentioned on, on the on the pod, like I didn't think was a great signing. It just didn't um, really address their issues. It didn't give them defense, the glaring issues, and it yeah, didn't correct. give them rebounding. And, like, and, and they were the two no, biggest correct. issues on the team. And then they brought in a guy who's incredibly talented, can score like crazy. Yeah. yeah I mean, the Wildcats offense was incredible. It was like a buzzsaw. There were no hum- issues it, there. It was humming, but in the end, did it get them into a better position of winning a yeah, jump shot? No, like it n- didn't. And, and you could say, look, a hamstring injury and all that, but that's, that's where it is. And, and I look at it and go, did it detract from Bryce, like in terms of that? Like for me, Corey Webster was a revelation yeah, in the second half. He was awesome. You know, like I look at what Danny has been able to do in the last two years. That's That would be his, I guess, his uh, biggest achievement, mm. uh, maybe only achievement really, like in terms of recruiting him when people – maybe underestimated his yeah he took a swing on him and, and it was and it paid off correct and he paid off in dividends like uh, and so and so i would be going back with that but i look at the form and i go like prior to ty webs to coming the walkers were humming you know like i think there was a pod earlier before we had this break i was, we were sort of saying the Wildcats don't make some sort of change or whatever they're not going to be good but they end up you know prior to ty coming in i think they were you know that new zealand situation where Corey is, um, you know, talking trash to. Yeah, you know, they were on a. They had won four or five, and the only game was maybe on the back end of a double header. So, I actually think they were in a great position, and so didn't really know. Now, they may they might bring Ty back, but I think that's actually they'll hurt him again. Mm. Like, yes, it's quality, but I I still think the way that system's run and the way that Jr. John really is playing. You just need two studs, which it, it runs through it, Corey yeah. and um, and Bryce, and and yet you could play a third guy in the back. But um, yeah, I'll be looking at potential free agents like Alex Dukas, you know. So um, that's a guy like you need if you want to recruit him. You can't have then tie because you'd be going, well, am I the fourth option? Yeah, like, plus yeah. two imports and. I know we've always been saying it, but there's a high likelihood Bryce is going to have to be a citizen by the season starting. So if that is to happen, you're bringing in three imports. Yeah. Like, how? What does that roster look like? You know. So, um, perplexed. Mm. I, I'm I'm not going to lie in terms of that this current stage. And so when you ask, like, was there much changeover? The biggest changeover one year was, I guess, Matt Matt Matty Knight's uh, retirement that year and. Um, yeah, we we got Nick Kay, Mitch Norton, um, Dexter Koenig, Drew. Like there was like a there was like I think maybe three or four guys. Yeah, maybe I think maybe we had Angus Brand or maybe he came in. Um, but yeah, there was like yeah that was maybe three or like three guys, and obviously Nick and and Mitch were the cornerstones of that. Like I yeah. remember, um, funny enough, because like, they were playing together about, at the time, right? At, at, yeah, Illawarra, Illawarra, and then they yeah. got sort of I think Illawarra went bankrupt um but it was no it was a pretty funny experience like when we looked at it you know and, and how that looked i remembered when we signed hugh greenwood um hugh was with us for like the first two weeks and they had basically signed Hugh to be like um the, the, the heir apparent to demo right. and i was like man this guy's not even gonna be the heir apparent he's gonna be starting like you know within like he was killing it like obviously i'm inflating it like yeah yeah he was he was killing this preseason and um, doing really well. Anyway, Hugh obviously goes um, to Adelaide um, for a footy gig, which was like super. Like, what what just happened? Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. And, and we were like, this is really good. To then we ended up signing Nate Jaiwai, and so we're like, ah, okay, that's a pretty yeah, like a, a nice little upgrade. And like that worked out well. Nate leaves. Um, but anyway, like once like all that situation, like the Nick K was like this really unique situation where I remember like speaking to Matt Nielsen at the time and Adam Ford and I was like, man, we need to get Nordo. 
we need to get Norto. Like I was like, I love him as a point guard. Like yep. he just runs it, um, you know, good. And they were like, yeah, well, look, we want Nick Kay. And I was like, I'm not a fan. Like I was like, <laughs> I like him. Um, but I was like, yeah, look, at the end of the day, like Nick Kay, you know, Jesse's been like, whenever we play him, he's not had, had these like good numbers. Um, and Cam Glidden was also like the other big free agent that was available at that time. Um and so anyway, and I thought like, oh, let's get Nordo glid in like as you know, like so we can get you know like a two, like a good like guard, Aussie guard because you know two imports or whatever it may be, and bigs um, and that, mate, egg in my face because like yeah. Nick Kane's up being this absolute superstar that now I'm like, if you're building a club, oh man, I'd be getting him, yeah, hell yeah, um, yep. absolute freak, and and obviously Nordo was good, and now Cam's in New Zealand, but it's funny how that all shifts, and I, I remember speaking to to Nelly because same deal like. Nelly Matt Nielsen was head of basketball operations, so basically was like the big big part of that. And he was like, "We no matter what, sell the house for Nick K." Like, but obviously salaries weren't that bad. We had Jack's um, financial yeah. behind us, which was always help. Like, which was which was always good that we could have that. So um, it's crazy. So hmm. yeah, in saying that, but yeah, like in terms of what that looks like, I mean, like let's let's go predictions. Like, I would suspect. Um, Jesse will come back. Yes. Um, he's in no rush. Like, um, you know, he's he's a a unique individual where, like, you know, he loves a, the game of basketball, but it's not his be all. Yeah. And all yeah. like, you know, he'll more happy to make a decision that's best for him and his family. Yeah. Um, you know, whereas other people may rush, they'll go. Um, and no, I like it. they need him more than. He needs them realistically, right? Yeah. Like with what this, this this club shifting. Obviously, yeah. Look, Todd, Kyle Zunick, um, Nordo, yeah. Like that's open that they're yeah they're on the outer, um, which is unique. Because, I've I've, you know, I've, I've might I, I reckon Zunick could be a, a one that comes back. Nah, you don't I think? think so. I think like that's the easiest one to move. Right. Um, small Maybe we're contract. hearing different things. Oh, well, maybe there you go. <laughs> um, well, they might have to. Um, because, well, but again, like that's. I mean, they're obviously trying to move Todd and um, Nordo's contract, but like yeah. Todd's contract is like, I mean, he signed a three-year deal. Yeah, yeah. So no, they it's... have to pay a hundred percent of his year two contract and fifty percent of his third. Like, yeah, that is. It's a fair chunk of coin. There's no Jack oh. Jack Jack Bandit money floating around as well. <laughs> At the moment, oh, um, let's talk yeah. about Luke Travers because that's what, probably yep. one of the biggest things that's come out in the off season so far that mm. that he would be leaving the Perth Wildcats. Now, for, you know, as someone who, I mean, you've been a big fan of Luke Travers. I, I think he's awesome. I think he's a future star. Um, yep. This was, I think, riding on the wall for quite a while. I've heard different things about why um, mm. he's leaving, but from my understanding, Luke Travers has been told. Um, and I heard Danny speak about this on the news just briefly and it sort of backed up what I've heard that, that Travis has gotten some advice that if you want to go to the NBA, which obviously he does, that's uh, his goal, that he has to prove himself outside of where he's comfortable in and um, they've suggested that he moves on from Perth, not because of a Perth thing, um, but because you need to show that, you know, he's a Rockingham guy, um, you know, he's played for Perth, he's, he's showing what he can do in Perth, but if NBA scouts are looking at him or the Cavs are like, okay, sure. Like you've done that in your own place. Can you, can you do that? Could we move you across to the other side of the world and show us that you can still do that? And I think um, that has been the major moving factor as apart from, you know, role or, um, or desire to leave Perth. I think it's more on what's best for his future, but I don't know. What do you, what do you think about LT? Yeah, I, I disagree with all that. To mm. be honest, I don't think um, I don't think an NBA club is like worrying about that and going like calling up his mum and saying, "Oh, like <laughs> he moved the other side of the world." Like he's a he's a twenty two year old male, like still very young and early yep. in his in his piece. Um, I think the best thing for his basketball is to leave the club, um, and I think his agent knows that too. Yep, because at the end of the day. Um, I don't think he's in the best opportunity to flourish, you know, like, so if we look at their system, Bryce is always going to be one. Yeah. Like there's no doubt. Um, 
that's the pecking order. Um, and then Corey, obviously, with that re-signing is number two. Um, but then, you know, you look at what that looks like if you're bringing back Ty and a couple of imports. Clearly, last year, like, they're not... Now, part of that, maturity, like, you know, if you look at success and you go, how will LT be successful in the NBA? And I mentioned this, it's the mold of Mitch Creek and it's what Xavier Cooks was doing. Yeah. Like, at points, like, they're... I think Mitch Creek's obviously way more offensively prowess than, say, Xavier Cooks. Like, you know, has the ability to shoot, yes. um, handle the ball a bit better. Xavier Cooks, better athlete, but um, his desire is incredible. Yeah. Um, and I think that's the thing that's holding LT back. Like, we see glimpse, and that's what's frustrating from, say, yeah. any fan is like, oh, we see this. Like, yeah. the where he has, you know, like 22, like, 11. People put on him, like, why can't he do it more often? And it's not always. Right. It's not always and I think, no, and absolutely. And I think that is, like, I think part of it, like, you know, we, we talk about, you know, maturity and growth. Like, I think we're so quick. Like, he's played three years mm. as a contracted, rostered player. Um, but we're so quick to go like, oh, NBA, you know, like, yeah, and yeah. he's drafted. So we expect this bona fide superstar. Yeah. Um, you know, he wasn't a, a draft, like a, he's the second round that they, the same reason, like he's a draft and stash guy. Like, yeah. like let's see his, his potential is, is that much better. So, so where are then, I, where then like could, could Luke Travers go where he could oh, I think he'll be flourish in Tyson. And, like yeah, he has look, a one on, he's not, I don't think he's the, the one option on any team. But is he the two on any team? Like, well, and but this is yeah, and this is where I go. So this will be the question mark. If if they're saying this, so I could be completely wrong. But if what Danny or the organization is saying, he has to do this, then he ends up in Illawarra, right? right? Because his agent then goes, go to Illawarra. Yeah, they're not going to win. The ball is in your hand. Your stats, Lamelo ball. Yep, your opportunity. Even, like. You're going to do that. Now, if Luke Travers is like, I wasn't content with like the role, um, I'm not satisfied with the organization and the direction that he's heading, he ends in, in a Melbourne or a Sydney. Mm. Like that, that's clear because then I'd be going, if you're in a Melbourne, like there's a lot of other studs, like, and they, yep. you know, they're going to bring in and people. So then clear, clearly they don't go, you need to go to Melbourne because Melbourne or a Sydney or that is Perth. Well, that's what yes. it was. So yeah. I think that will, that will become resolved. Like, yeah, don't, um, in, in that regard. Um, and even part of me thinks, like even in that sense, if the Cavs were like, you need to grow and that was came from their direction and their comms, would you not think he'd be in the G League under their nose? Yeah. And saying, Go, grow here. Like, yeah, yeah. This is the perfect opportunity for growth. We can see you, we can bring you up and down and, and whatnot. So, yeah. Yeah. Look, I think, look, I'm sure there's like some, um, like there's some reasoning, truth behind that. But I just think, I don't think he was content, like, mm. with, with being that. Like, I think he looks at it and goes, yeah, like Bryce is number numero uno, but I just don't think he, he is pleased with that. And um, even if you look at it, you, I could say to him and go, you need to be Xavier Cooks and Mitch Creek, but the system that they're running, he doesn't flourish as a four man. Yeah. So he is like the three man and then backup point guard and all that. So you're like, hey, be the four, but in the four, it's a lot of pick and pop. You know what I mean? It's yeah. not like a guy where Cooks is like how, and initiates the play and all that sort of stuff. So yeah, yeah, right. He has to get in a system where he is a playmaker because. I don't think he is um, a one. He's not a giddy, you know, these guys. He's not a 3 and D guy. I, I honestly think he is that. Um, like he could play like a, a, like a like Draymond a Green, floor, like yeah. not a smart Draymond Green, like, but you know what I mean? Like yeah. Draymond's a beast, but like a guy that is able to, and that's what he has to do. That, that's what's holding him back, obviously, the mental fortitude. Like get the ball off the ring and like I'm going to take three bounces and I'm going to yam it on your head, yeah. right? And that's the thing, like Xavier Cook's like, I don't think like yeah, Cooks is he's 27, 28, so he's shown that. Like, but I think that that is the ceiling for from LT and yeah, and that's what yeah. I believe he, he he can ultimately get to. I think um I, I I have no clue of where he's going. I, I don't know Luke at all. I'd say that there may be a couple of options. Let let's let's say Europe right is option C or something. Mm. Like, because he yeah. could get paid, and maybe there's a club that goes after him and gives him a good stack of coin. Yeah. Um, I'd say. 
what do you think about Southeast Melbourne as a as a destination for him with Mike Kelly yeah. um, and their connection to the NBA with you know ownership and and sort of Mitch Creek? I honestly think you know if there would and if there is any and as much as that pains me, Sydney would be your best option. Mm. You know, like they've got how many players getting out of there? Yeah, um, with a guy that's left. I also um, think that Sydney could be an option because. Um, there's a couple of um, NBL journos that are really pushing the Melbourne thing. <laughs> and my yeah. my sort of tinfoil take is that the Sydney Kings are telling certain journalists that um, they're going to be going after Luke Travers. But could you please say that Melbourne are really interested so that we can fly under the radar and take him? Um, mm. I would say that because uh, I've seen certain journos saying Travers, yep, yeah, Melbourne's, you know, really in there, yeah. which he probably, which Melbourne, you know, could definitely be interested. Every club's going to be interested in Luke Travers. Absolutely. But yeah. I have noticed Sydney not really being mentioned much at all, and I feel like that's a directive. And that's my tinfoil hot take that, um, you know, you might yeah. not agree. <laughs> you probably wouldn't agree, but I was just no, looking from afar. I, but, but and, and to be completely honest, I mean, some people are like, as much as, um, and I was listening to a few things today and they were like, yeah, it was, you know, a couple of days, it, it didn't seem like LT, you know, like he was agreeing, he was coming back and, and there's only been the last few days. Like, I I can't help but say, like, I'm a Wildcats fan, you know, like, and that loyalty always will go there. I can't help but feel disappointed because I, I honestly think he is the face of that franchise, you know what I mean? And so, like... Um, as much as I would pay, like, and it's not, it's not that it's a WA guy. Like, so as much as, um, that's part of it, your agent's going to be in your ear, but if you were able to provide your agent an opportunity to be like, you're flourishing. Like I would say like to, to LT and go, mate, like, um, the ball is going to be in your hands all the time. Like this yeah. is my thing is that. We haven't seen we haven't seen him being in a position to fail. So like, you know, like put him in like go, all right, mate, we've got you in a year. Um, you're gonna be our second guy. Like the ball is gonna we're gonna be running players through you. Yeah. Um but but in, in in essence, if you don't do well, like your next contract is done. Like we'll sign you for a one year deal and, and we'll do that and, and prove us like that your yeah. your capacity, like and do that. But I would look at it and this is the thing, like do I think he's an NBA guy? It's still very unsure because I think there's that. But, mate, I honestly didn't think, you know, as much as I, I, I like Xavier Cooks as a player, I'm like, I was not expecting him to sign a deal for Wizards, like, you know, that as a 27, 28-year-old. So, like, it just shows that, right? Hmm. And there's a lot of NBA guys around the league. I'm not saying he's not good, but just the age thing and, you know, like the the, de- the deficiency of you not shooting, right? Yeah. Um, you can be, so again, I don't be exposed know. very quickly in the NBA when, I mean, we've seen players uh, who from one point sign four year, you know, $110 million contracts to yeah. when that contract ends, yeah. they're out of the league because the game, they, they, can't, they can't survive in the game. Um, so, so on that, like, and that's where, that's why I see like Mitch Creek as invaluable mm. as a basketball player in the NBL because he's like that guy, he's like fringe, you know, yeah. like he could go back to the NBA and get a couple of 10 days. He might get a deal, but he could, he's an absolute beast in the NBL. He like knows the league. Yep. You know, he's always going to be athletic. He's adding to his game. He knows it, you know, and all that sort of stuff. So oh, oh, here's, here's my hot take. Okay. If, if you want a conspiracy theory is if, um, if ever uh, the NBL and Larry Kessman wanted to create a, uh, do a rivalry, it would be now to okay. launch a second Perth team. <laughs> and your very first signing for that second Perth team would be Bryce Cotton. Yep. Because right now he's looking and going, what is going on? Yeah, what's going on in Perth? Like, yeah. Correct. Um, and do you know who your very first signing would be after that if you're in next year? Second signing? Trevor Gleason. Yeah. Because he's like Nick Nurse – High likelihood of getting fired. Yeah. Trev's going to be getting paid out and he's going to be sitting at home getting a nice little check yes. and going, oh, well, I'm coming back. That's right. And um, and look, there was a lot of talks. Uh, yeah, sorry. 
not talks. There was just a lot of speculation that he would be end he would end up at Southeast Melbourne because that coaching thing was up. Um, yeah, I know and, timing wasn't. If yeah, another and, yeah. another year, he high likely would yeah. no doubt. But um, you know, he can't commit to an NBA te- uh, an NBL team. Why would he? Like if he's on five hundred thousand, I'm just yeah. estimating here, guesstimating here. He's gonna he can get that while he's sitting at home. Yeah, but if he gets yeah. another job, he's not getting he's that. Go like, it's just timing. Who wants to go to work? <laughs> yeah. I don't want to go to work. Mate, it's I want to sit at home for $500,000. Yeah. yeah. Um, look, so there's a lot to play out. Um, I know that was probably a lot of Wildcats stuff, but we are here in Perth um, and they've got probably more question marks. Are you going to slice anyone. that? They'll, they'll, they'll go nuts. I reckon if you cut up that bit where it says Bryce Cotton's second Perth team. Yep. Mate, the West. The West Larry. will run that on the back page, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, as Larry's s- trying to bring a team to Gold Coast. It's not working, Larry. Like, I know you're a genius, but seriously. The, the thing about the Gold Coast, you just look across the codes of every single oh. franchise in Australia. You've got the whatever the rugby, Titans. I don't know the rugby. Yeah, Sun. no, yeah, no, Titans, no good, right? The Gold Coast Suns. Where are the Dolphins f- playing out of? Uh, Queensland somewhere. I don't know. Okay. I don't know um, NRL at all. Um, yeah, okay. yeah. The only reason why I know about the Dolphins is because on back chat uh, we're sponsored by Bluebet, and Bluebet are like one of the major backers of, Loving them. of the Dolphins, and they're okay. doing well. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I look. Uh, what I'm saying is the Gold, Gold Coast is just it, it's a it's a hole for teams to go and never succeed. Like I no. don't, um, you know. So I just don't know why the Gold Coast. There's probably a lot of money in it. Like and and Larry's a businessman. He's very smart. So I understand that that oh, yeah, would make yeah. sense. A sec a second Perth team. Where it's too indoctrinated here with Perth Wildcats. It's like, do you honestly? Uh, think I that? mean, maybe but at this current time, maybe you could maybe you could say that at West Coast Eagles, like when the Dockers were coming in, you'd be like, ah, eh, no one's going to go for the Dockers. But but we also had the the um, the WAFL and like South Fremantle, East Fremantle has huge followings and stuff. So I don't know, maybe, maybe, maybe a second team, but <coughs> who, who I knows? Think it's, That's, oh, um, look, I think it, it, it's worth the current climate. Like I don't, honestly, I think it would work, but if, if, if there is a time when you're talking like shifting and the last two years of success and what that looks like, this would be the time. Like it, it, you, you're yeah. getting like if, and say another year of, uh, oh, not making the playoffs. Wildcats fans were pissed off by because the roof was going to be open one game. Like if another Mate, team, the, another team the came, fourth, fourth I reckon, song choice. Like they, yeah, yeah, oh, no, yeah. They, they certainly would. But I think, but imagine that. Imagine that as a, like I'm a massive if. I don't know. If it's April, not April one. But imagine if like that's what I'm going to tweet on April first. But uh, <laughs> new NBL Perth team, uh, Bryce Cotton. But like not the imagine that as a signing. Like nah, definitely not the Bandits. Like. Bryce Cotton, inaugural signing, Trev Gleason. Like, tell me that's not a rivalry. Like, yeah. and and off those two, like would, you're not making, you might not be making much money. Mate, you'd sell out of challenge straight away. Like that's your little and then you play games out of Perth. Like half yeah. the games. Yeah, hate like, it. Imagine the games the games at RSC. That would be good. Um I've got a couple of fan questions. I'll be the GM. <laughs> okay. Um can I get on that? You'll be the comms guy. No, I've done that job at the Wildcats. Yeah, I, do, I don't no, want to do you've that been again. The new, you've been the you've been the Wade Dobson too. Well. I don't <laughs> I don't want to be the guy that has to. I've done this. We call up. All right, I got to call Greg. I get a call from. Um, I'm not going to name names of stations because I'm not going to shoot anyone. But you get a call from a certain radio station. <laughs> I just did before. You should do that. Oh, you get a call from SEN. No, I'm joking. Um, you get a call from, <laughs> from a radio station. They're like, hello, we'd like to talk to Bryce Cotton tomorrow, and you're like, okay, and like, it's, can we get him to come in at um, I don't know, seven forty-five, and you're like, uh, I'll find out. And then I got to get on my phone and call Bryce. Like, three, hello, uh, hey Bryce, it's Dan. Who? Dan from Wild Wildcats. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know who you are. Yeah. Anyways, Bryce, can you go to? Can you drive out to Fremantle tomorrow at seven forty-five for an interview? And then he hangs up. Like, that. It's working for a sports team is really. What is the worst? Is that what? What's the worst thing you've had to do? Like the. Uh, um. Oh, I remember. I remember vividly, actually, when I was also at the Wildcats, I was also doing comm stuff for the Lynx. And what would happen is as soon as the game would finish, you would quickly get the press conference area ready to go. Um, like it's already basically set up, but you just make sure that it's all set. There's a couple of chairs yeah. there. Um, and then what I'd have to do is I would have to go to the um, away 
change rooms, knock on the door and then go get the coach and go, hey, mate, sorry, we've just got the press conference. And especially if that team had just lost, they don't want to see. They don't know who you are and they don't know why you're talking to them. (laughs) And the worst was the um, Canberra Capitals. Curry Graf? Um, No, or maybe it was, no, Melbourne, the Melbourne coach. Yeah. Um, the guy, he hated me. He gave me dead eye. Like, I'm like, sorry, you got to come. And then he, then, uh, I don't know, 20 minutes have gone past. He's still in the change rooms, go back down. Hey, mate, really? And he's, I'm coming. Just give me a second. Like, they, yeah, did not, um, did not treat me very well. And I had to talk about it with with my boss at the time. I was like, mate, this just happened. He went Burko at me and they called the team and they said, mate, no good. You you got it. You can't treat people like that. Um, So yeah, that was pretty, that was pretty bad. All right. Here's a couple of questions that got sent in. Um, Firstly, this is off the back of the, uh, this was sent in a couple of weeks ago, but it's been so long since you've been here. Um, (laughs) Is there prize money for winning the NBL championship? No, not that I know of. Um, no, nah, like the only bonuses that were tied into a contract were making finals, like semi finals and finals, and, which is always sick like for us, right? NBL first team and stuff like that. No, see, I don't think Wildcats ever that was part of the thing that like philosophy of culture might have obviously changed. Um, but their culture had changed in terms of like you, there was no play bonuses attached to contracts, like they were like, right. we don't want a selfish attitude, so they were literally huh. like. Yeah, um, we, you know, contracts were the thing. Um, okay. Which I was like, yeah, it's a great, but uh, sorry, um, finals, which was always like of all 10, 9, 10 years I played, like we made six of them. So I was always like, Cashed I up. literally was like, yeah, I knew straight away. All right. <laughs> so I was like, sweet, here's my <laughs> whatever percentage of my contract I've got. And I was like, that's my trip to Bali. God, like, but- oh, that's all sorted. It was nice. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um here we go. How lucrative is it to go and play in um, at the end of the NBL to some of the uh, international uh, teams? So, you know, there's a lot of international teams out there. We've, we've seen players go to Japan, Spain, um, France, Rico, Korean leagues, yeah. China. Um, compared to sort of the money that can be made NBL in the one? NBL. Uh, yeah, but oh, NBL. NBL one, I'd say, is a good, you know, is a really competitive um, competition, but it's not, you know, you're not getting that get paid as as opposed to some of these international nah. tournaments. Yeah, it's certainly interesting. I mean, like, you know, I think he's done it. Like, I mean, it's it's changing. I think the NBL and I think social media and all that sort of stuff opens that whole world up. Like you're seeing like Will Magnay is over in Europe, Jack McVay is over in Europe, um, you know, even Alan, Alan, Alan Williams is in Japan. I think you see that because there's a lot of Australian coaches now in those Asian leagues. So they sort of like, I know what I'm going to get here. So it's not that bad. Big. Yep. It's, um, I couldn't speak. I know it's funny when you sort of go, I remembered um, being in a three on like a 3x3 uh, Asia Cup tournament last year. And DJ was on my team, Daniel Johnson from Adelaide. And the coach of Saigon Heat, which is like the Singaporean team, like come team comes up to him and he's like, "Oh, hey, mate, love to chat." And um, he's like, "Look, I, I want to sign you if you're not playing NBL, but I want to sign you." And then um, Deej is like the quietest dude, and I was just like, "Yeah, just yeah, hit me up, whatever." Like, yeah. has no like ambition. Um, but then he's like, "Yeah, look, it'll be like for two months. It'll be like eighty grand, you know." And I was just like. Oh, uh, I was like, I'll, I'll come back. Like, if DJ doesn't want the gig, like, I'm more than happy to come back. Like, I love Singapore, but yeah, it's um, obviously when I was going through, there wasn't like it was rare for those guys. Like, I mean, you didn't have Japan League and all those guys. Like, China was, you know, that was like lucrative. But you know, even seeing, look at what you now Golding's gone to Paris because of Will Weaver. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like so much is the the NBL alumni, those coaching networks is so far stretched now that they are going there, you know. Yeah. So and Reese Vague was, um, did Reese Vague go to Reese is currently in Japan. Japan. That's uh, right. Like I actually think that's a guy that the Wildcats should target. Um big fan of Reese Vague like, as a as a person. Our exceptional human. Um uh, no, nah, really 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 good guy. But you know, talking about a guy that, um, you know, we spoke, spoke about LT, about a, um, a change of scenery, like um, Reese was like, had all this promise in the world. Um, but I was like, yeah, look, a lot of things. And then Trev was one of those guys that once he had this, like, I'm not, I'm not sure if label, but like yeah. his, what he had 
uh, depicted you as, it was never changing. Like that would be for so, good and bad as well. Oh, uh, in a heartbeat, absolutely. I remember it was. Well, we've lost Greg. Some crazy weather. Uh, actual thunder and lightning, and I think you know over in Edgewater, maybe the entire power has just gone out. But that's all we have time for anyway. That's the end of our little uh, wrap of what's happened so far at the NBL free agency. There'll be much more to talk about next week. There'll probably be some player signings that we can uh, talk about a bit more in depth. Uh, hello at backchatpodcast.com.au is where you can email us or send us uh, a little message on Instagram, backchat underscore basketball. Um, yeah, hopefully the Wildcats will sign some players and we'll see a bit of player movement. It's always an exciting time of year. Catch you next week. Bye.